What's going on everybody? Nick here. I am a huge fan of guitar riffs. I love guitar. I'm really jealous of guitar players. I've always wanted to be a guitar player and I sort of dabble in it. I don't think I'm by an expert by any stretch. That's why I have been so blessed to have players like Randy McStein, Don Carr, Tom Hemby, Carl Verheyen, uh, Paul Gilbert playing on my record, playing riffs that I wrote. How cool is that? I am a super blessed guy for sure. Um, I wrote these riffs, these guys played them, and they're, they're pretty fun to play. So I thought I'd you know, break them down a little bit here for you in this video. And you know, if you wanna play them at home, I definitely encourage it. Play them, send me the videos, you know, put them up on Instagram or just send them to me in an email. I'd love to hear how you play these riffs. It'd be fantastic. All right, so let's get into the first one. The first one is from Turn Your Life Around. I'll play the main riff. It's, it's the one that starts the song. And it's broken up into two things, two halves. So I'll play the first half first. I'm gonna play it pretty slow and I also want to let you know this particular riff is sort of swung. It's not really straight. You want to give it a little bit of that swung feel. Here it is, all regular tuning in E. All right, here's the first half of the first riff, like this. Two, three, four. <laughs> has a little bit of a different riff to round out the whole form of this thing. So here we go. Here's the second half. Yeah, up to tempo, it's pretty hard. So one more time. It's that part right here we go. jump to play at tempo so I sort of like hammered pulled off a little bit to get it to play it up to tempo Randy when he did this song in the studio he picked every note and it just sounds amazing so up to tempo the whole thing sounds like this two three four <laughs> seems to be easier for me to do it. Now I also tagged on the playing part at the end of the song where it gets fast, really up-tempo, double-timed thing. It's a lot of fun and there's a lots of upbeats in this riff. So if here's the tempo, I'll sing out the part. Ba -da -da -da. One, two, one, two, three, four, and two, and three. So you're starting on the upbeat all of this, right off the bat. One and two, right? You're starting on the end of one. Two, one, two, three, four. Right? All the upbeats. Makes it a lot of fun to play. Let me play it real slow first. One, two, one, two, three, four, one.
See, it's not really a difficult part. It's just when it's fast and all those upbeats, you gotta just kind of stay on your time. Now, throughout the whole ending, I threw in a couple of little, little flashy things for the, the rhythm section to play together. And one goes like this. Right? And the other one is like this. Those things happen around the second half of this outro. So let me play it slowly, and then we'll do it up to tempo one more time. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. transition between the two parts and also at the end of the tune we just have a octave thing right at E chromatic down to D right one two three four. again lots of upbeats that kind of thing so Okay, let's go on to the second tune is Money. I just put the, the end riff for Money. I think it's really cool because um, the riff is in six, but the drums go to playing four, four times. So you got the two time signatures going over the top of each other. And it's just fun. That's all. It's pretty simple. So here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> you chunk it, you mute the string so you can go just adds a little bit of flavor so I just mentioned that the riff is in 6-4 let me do the 6 with my fingers and I'll sing the riff and you can see how it lays in 6-4 time 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 Right? And what's cool when the drums are in four is that in the middle of the riff, when you repeat the riff, it actually starts on the snare drum of the drum groove rather than on the kick drum of the drum groove. That's where the two time signatures are turning around on each other, and it's just, I think it's fun, right? Cool. All right, let's go on to the third track in uh, this little riff thing. And this is more of a guitar part than a riff, and this is from Snake Oil Salesman. Let me tune the guitar down to D. The funnest part about this, you know, it's a pretty easy part in D, but what's fun about it is the riff going in, leading into the verse. One more time. That's the coolest part. You have... You have the D, and then the G open, okay? That adds so much flavor to that chord. Then when you add the F sharp into it at the end, It's a sweet sound. That's what makes guitar so cool. You can have these clusters of notes together. It's really neat, right? So here's the riff again. Up to tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two. Right? Now I'll play the meat of the uh, verse part. It's one, two, three, four. One, two. So D to C over D, D, and I'm just walking down from F. That's basically the verse part. The end of the verse 
it goes from F, but it's kind of like an open F. Instead of a regular old F chord, I'm taking off the middle finger, so that G is droning in there again, right? Great sound. And then, typical rock and roll thing there, right? Pulling off from C. It's a similar riff to the other one, but you're doing it in A. You still have the open strings, the D is droning, and then you have the uh, D flat in there, or I should say C sharp. But... So you have A, D, and C sharp. So cool. Back to the D chord. All right, that is Snake Oil Salesman. Then I went into Mercy. Cool, fun, and back into guitar riff land. A lot of single note stuff here. Um, this is, you know, I needed to leave room for uh, Jem Godfrey to do another blazing keyboard solo, which he, uh, he did so great. All right, so let's uh, get into this one. The main part of it, the beginning part of it, is just like it's back, in, it's still in D. So you go. <laughs> Chunking it the whole thing really helps, especially when the drums are driving. So it's a little bit of dampening back here by the bridge. So you got that sound. The next section goes up to B flat. where the keyboard solo starts goes into more of a guitar part so it's like this again one of these really cool guitar things <laughs> three strings. So again, it's B flat, open D, with, and then going back and forth between E and A. And the rhythm is like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. To me, it sort of reminds me a little bit of a, like a Foo Fighters sort of thing, you know? And if that makes sense, at least that's clear. My brain tells me. So, and then the second half, you're going back down to just regular D chord. But you're gonna go to F. And then have the G droning, so it's like this. And okay, so the whole thing together. One, two, three, four. to the riff part. Cool, a lot of fun there. So now, 
Let's move on to the next track. Ooh, this is a good one. This is a good one. I gotta change guitars for this one. All right, yes, yes, yes. This is a light blue baritone guitar. Now, can you really rock hard with a light blue baritone guitar? Turquoise, sort of ocean green. I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a trippy color, but it's all I have here at the house. Now, when I recorded this part at uh, the studios, at Sweetwater Studios, I think I borrowed a seven string guitar. I forget what it was, maybe an Ibanez to do this particular thing. So it was a proper guitar tuned down to C, okay? To give you that just as rock as I could get it, the rock sound altogether. But here at home, I don't have anything else that goes this low. So I grabbed this baritone guitar and this guitar sounds killer distorted. It's great. <laughs> to do with uh, snake <laughs> with the song overcome i just wanted to play that sound because it's great okay so back to, i'm off on a tangent let's get back to this particular riff it's pretty simple just repeats you know i'm very i was definitely influenced by muse for this track and uh, a few other things but just their vibe was my inf was my inspiration i guess i should say this tune the riff goes like this <laughs> for this riff go like this. We start on G, G flat, C, B flat, G flat, G. That's it. That's such a rock sound. And at the end you just got that chunk in like a poly rhythm. You're going, you're playing three. One, two, da 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 here let me play the whole thing for you right now and it starts the riff starts on the and of four going into beat one so it's one two three four and a one and a one like that one two three <laughs> tune we're going to is the tune where another fantastic guitar player total fan of this guy's playing and his band for many 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 years rick nielsen from cheap trick played on my record come on that's crazy that's crazy talk how did I, how'd that happen i don't know but it's awesome and he played on this tune which is called in my bones the main riff is in five four pretty simple riff but time is five and it goes like this one two three four five <laughs> Let me sort of count out the riff a little bit for you here so you can hopefully it makes it easier for you to understand. One, two, one, two, three, four, one and two, and three, and four, five, one and two, and three, and four, and five, and one, two, and three, and four, five, one, two, and three, and four, and five, and one, two, and three, and four, five, one, two, and three. Also played a little bit of the verse section too and, and when it goes to the verse where the vocal comes in that actually switches to six four and then back to the riff in five four but it's pretty simple and it goes like this this is the little verse part one two three four five six <laughs> kept the guitar part really simple with just power chords because Jacob Dupre, fantastic keyboard player, a good friend of mine, playing organ, a lot of B3 around here. So I wanted to leave the organ room to play all the embellishments and the, you know, the different notes 
and all that kind of stuff, the ear candy, while the guitar is just playing power chord, sort of power rock guitar. All right, let me quickly put the two together. Again, the riff is in five, the verse part is in six. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> whole thing. This is a really fun one. This is the only song on the record where I played everything except for the guitar solo. I'm not really a soloist. I'd like to be more of a soloist, um, but you can't really solo like Randy McStein can. He played the solo on this track and a number of others on the record, but I did play all the rhythm guitar and the, the bass and the keyboard and all that kind of stuff on this tune. This is Wrong Place, Wrong Time. All based in E, and this is the main riff right here. One, two, three. It's all based, it's all kind of right around this fifth fret area, so it's, you're not going to really go too far. You have a little, couple little chromatic things. So here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> parts that are playing the same thing, right? Kind of break it into chunks right here. So this part, you play at the, at the beginning and in the middle. Okay, then after the first time, you add on this. Pretty simple. E, A flat, e, D. And at the end, you add the chromatic walk down from B flat. So it's B. So it's B flat, D, G. Okay. And that's your tag to end the whole phrase to, and start over again. Cool? All together? One, two, three, four. Sweet. All right. Now, uh, going into the sort of, I don't know, call this the chorus. It's the next section. Again, an E. This is the riff like this. Two, three, four. And then you repeat. Again, one more time. Three, four. up at the end of the whole thing it's just a, i wanted something that was gonna uh, be uh just build tension that's sort of what this does starting on e lots of downstrokes i think i mean i sometimes when i was playing in the studio i did both depending on how tired my hand was but you want a chunk at least the first time around you want a chunky sounding and the second time as it builds you want more of an open string one two three four <laughs> The 
second time around, you do the more the open string. Back here by the bridge, give it kind of a jangly sound. So, at, when you get up to there, you do that part at the top three times three times and then you have a chromatic walk down to finish off the phrase starting right here it goes it starts basically one fret down so you have G and E flat okay. then you chromatically walk down five frets Okay, like this. And then once you hit that E flat down here, you round out the phrase by doing this. E, B, G, up to tempo, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So let me play that whole last little bit and we'll round out this video. So again, second time around, jangly open strings, and then just have a lot of fun bang your head when you're doing it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Lots of guitar riffs from my record Invisible. I hope you enjoyed them and I encourage you, if you're into it and you want to do it, play some of these riffs, record yourself doing them and send them on to me. I'd love to check them out and see how you do it. We'll post them up online. You know, if you have any questions or anything like that, send those along as well. And just so you know, how I'm getting the sounds here on uh, for this video, I had very basic. You know, in the studio we had lots of great guitars and guitar amps to go through. Didn't do it like this. I was playing Les Pauls through Marshalls and and Mesa Boogies and Friedman's, and I was, you know, at Sweetwater, the gear is just amazing. But here at home, I'm going into my Apollo 8P, and I have my Supro and my Dan Electro baritone guitar. Going into a, basically a Tube Screamer, the sound I'm going for is a Tube Screamer before a Friedman, I think they call it the Dirty Shirley amplifier, right? So Tube Screamer, then the, the Dirty Shirley, and that's basically the sound, it's just a regular old distorted sound. Um, Really nice one. Very usable. You know, on the record, we had different sounds for different songs, but for this, it's just the same sound all the way through. And I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I have to say that in every video I do. I'm so doing, used to doing Sweetwater videos. I just, that, that phrase is in my head no matter any time I shoot a video. But I do encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe. And have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great year. This year's been crazy, but um, it's going to get better. It's definitely going to get better. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. Take care.